What's up everyone, I'm Irish Ronan, back with another Game Jam Top 10. This week I played over 250 games from the Brackies Game Jam. Brackies as in the godfather of YouTube Unity tutorials. The theme of this jam was diving deeper. Speaking of jams, quick announcement, I'm hosting a Game Jam that starts tomorrow. More on that later. Now, before we get into the list, let's cover what I'm looking for in a jam game. Number one, fun. If a game ain't fun, what's the point? Two, creativity. I want to see some cool new stuff. Three, polish. Time is tight in a game jam. The game should be too. All right, let's dive in. Coming in at number 10, we have The Gorge by Distru121. In this game, you play as a nameless adventurer, though he does seem familiar for some reason. It's a platformer where the primary movement mechanic is a grappling hook. This game is primarily on the list because of its fun factor. It is so much fun to drop in, swing, launch, all kinds of crazy stuff with this little guy. The physics felt great and are a big part of that fun factor, but the death sounds and splatter effects made me laugh almost every single time, which may say more about me as a person than about the game, but we're not going to focus on that. Beyond that, the graphics are great, and really the only reason it's not higher on this list is the lack of music. But truth be told, I don't even care about that. This game is a blast, and you should absolutely check it out. Number 9 on the list is Didi by Dimas Fantovas 337 This is a cool little game where you control a robot diving in caves. The main, and really only, mechanic is that the robot traces the exact path of your mouse, but on a one second delay. What I like about this game is the simplicity. The goals, controls, and obstacles are all very clear, very straightforward, but that simple addition of a delay to your movement adds a genuine challenge to the game. It's all about timing. I also like how just a few lighting effects on otherwise pretty simple game art gives it a real sense of depth. And speaking of depth, there were a lot of cave diving sorts of games due to the th jam theme of diving deeper, but this was for sure one of the most unique. Give it a go. Number eight from the jam is Weeble's Descent by Upside Down Itch. In this game, you play as a weeble, as in, the weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Your goal is to reach the bottom by leaning your weeble and launching from platform to platform. The dev described this as a rage game, and to that I say, yup. There were many times where I thought I had executed just the perfect jump and then got absolutely wrecked. Fortunately, the game is engaging enough to keep you coming back for more punishment. Thank you, sir. May I have another? The dev clearly worked quickly and well. There are lots of areas with distinct graphics and music. The controls are tight. The UI looks great. Plus, the dev even took the time to add a leaderboard. So give it a shot. See where you rank. Lucky number seven is a game called Crimson Dunes. This is not my typical sort of game, but I found it to be incredibly addictive. You are guiding the strider through a desert. Each card you click on is an action, and you need to examine each layer as you dive deeper into the desert. What I really like about this game is the balance. In the early levels, you have to make some very strategic decisions about how best to approach the level. Some buffs last only for that level, others are instantaneous, others last for the rest of the game. Unfortunately, in the later st stages, the balance kind of falls apart, and your stats are absolutely insane, but that can be fun in its own way. I'm the juggernaut! Anyway, even if this sort of game isn't your typical genre, it's definitely worth trying out. Next up at number six is Let Your Balls Fall by Emile the April. Here we have another game that does a lot with a little. The graphics are very minimal, and the controls are as simple as it gets, point and click. But the gameplay is still quite challenging. Plus, bonus points for the juvenile humor of the title. Let your balls fall. <laughs> anyway, you launch balls, and they bounce around like crazy, trying to reach the bottom of the level. At the end of the level, you're given a choice of upgrades, either more balls to throw, or an increase in the number of bounces before they get disintegrated. No disintegration. The upgrades make a huge difference, and you actually do have to choose them intelligently, or you're going to be stuck on the same level trying over and over and over, like I did. 
but the game strikes a very good balance between skill and luck. I had a lot of fun playing this one. You will too. We interrupt this program for an important news announcement. Hey, remember when I said I'm hosting a game jam? I am. The limitation for this jam is that you can use no more than four buttons. I want to see how creative people can get with such limited options. There will also be an optional theme announced at the start of the jam, which is tomorrow, by the way. So follow the link in the description and join the jam. I'll be making a video specifically highlighting the best games of my jam, so don't miss out. Numero Cinco is Downer by Blinia de Bill. Sure. This game is the very definition of easy to learn, hard to master. You can learn the controls in 20 seconds, but fluidly navigating the constantly scrolling levels, not so much. It's been 84 years. The arrow keys and jump are simple enough, but the kickback on the gun is intense and must be considered at all times. If you don't compensate, it will launch you clear across the level. If you do, you can kind of finesse a rather tricky landing. Another extremely cool feature is that the level is generated at runtime, which is impressive on its own. But the dev also had the foresight to ensure that the tiles at the edges of the levels are always safe. That way you don't have to jump blindly down into danger. Check out the big brain on bread. It's fast, it's hard, and it's a lot of fun. Go check it out. Just off the podium at number four, we have Katana Well by Tommy Keys. This dev clearly took inspiration from Downwell to create this one. Similar color palette, art style, and UI were almost directly lifted. But the dev added a cool twist with the addition of a multi-purpose katana. I love mechanics like this that can be used in multiple different ways depending on the context. In this case, the katana can be used as a dash or a double jump or an attack, or even to break through blocks. But wait, there's more. The game is a lot of fun, and each playthrough only takes, like, a minute. The procedurally generated levels keep things spicy, and the music is awesome. Rogers! Rogers! It's well put together, and a lot of fun. Give it a play. In third place is Scuba Steve's Salvage Squad by Saw the Games. This jam saw a lot of games about divers. Shocker. Where you have to dive down and bring stuff up. For me, this was by far the best in class. You play as a ship captain called Scuba Steve, and you hire and deploy divers to collect treasure. As the divers bring back the treasure, you can spend that in the shop to upgrade your boat, the divers, and their equipment. What is super impressive about this game is how well tuned it is. Upgrades are almost always within reach pretty quickly, and each upgrade has a noticeable impact on how quickly you can collect the treasure. Additionally, the game strikes a perfect balance between depth and approachability. Very often, devs lose sight that the player does not know every inch of the back end of this game and the upgrade system and all of that stuff, and it gets way too complex to be quickly understood. Do you know how easy this is for me? Do you have any f Not the case here. Everything makes sense, you understand what it should do, and it does it the way it should. This game is a gem. It's the one I played most out of the entire jam, for sure. You should absolutely go play it. Second place and the silver medal go to Deep Space Rescue by Robert W. This game is perfect. Seriously, I have nothing negative to say about this game. The controls are intuitive, the physics are extremely fun, and the challenge level is just right. Unlike a lot of the games that are in this genre, there is a healthy buffer for bouncing into things so that you don't have to be perfect in your execution. You can bump a wall a little bit, or come in a little hot on a landing, or slightly off vertical and not have to worry about this happening. Additionally, there are a few distinct areas with well-executed mechanics to force you to adjust your flight style. Truthfully, the only reason this game isn't number one on the list is that there's nothing really new about it. I've played games with similar mechanics that went above and beyond on the creativity side and really benefited from it. That said, top marks for fun, top marks for polish. The dev knew exactly what they wanted to make and they made it perfectly. Yeah, that is a cheeseburger. I played this game all the way through multiple times. You gotta check it out. 
No top 10 list would be complete without some honorable mentions. First up is Tide's End by Bijoy Kochar. A lot of games tried to explore the theme of diving deeper in the psychological sense. This game nailed it. It's about a young man reminiscing about his past and the time spent with the love of his life. I'm not usually a fan of this type of game, but this one blew me away. The gameplay consists of some nice little circuit puzzles with rotating tiles, and as you complete the tiles, a picture emerges. This works for two reasons. First, the art is beautiful. I am no artist, and I can't imagine how people create things like this. Second, the shapes of this circuit loosely match the geometry of the picture that they reveal, which adds a nice sense of immersion. It was a great experience, and you should totally try it. Next up is The Folder Dungeon by Ravernt. This is a dungeon crawler set in a folder hierarchy, as in a folder hierarchy. In addition to being the most creative use of the theme, it also highlights the structure of dungeon crawlers in general, in kind of a meta way. The only reason that this isn't in the top 10 is that it lacked a little bit of the fun factor. I'm not sure how the dev might fix that, but the idea is certainly cool enough to keep working on, and definitely cool enough for you to go play. And the big winner, gold medal number one, is Dive Mentions by Soy Vixter Dev and Paolo Wigigigig. The game is great. It's a 2D puzzle platformer with the wrinkle that the game is not 2D. What? As you play, you need to switch between up to three different parallel planes in order to successfully navigate the levels and solve the puzzles. I can't call out all the details that work well in this game because it's all of them. Everything works just as it should. The controls are introduced and communicated well, the gameplay is fun, the graphics are clean and color-coded by layer to help readability, the music is low-key and goes well with the sounds, and on and on and on. If I had to pick something to complain about, it would be the missed opportunity of being able to switch layers while in the air, though that was probably a conscious choice on the dev's part. But it would allow for some more creative puzzle design. But, truth be trolled, this is exactly what a Game Jam game should be. It really is the complete package, and the only thing missing from this game is more game. Go see for yourself. And that'll do it for the top 10 games from the Brackies Game Jam. If your game didn't make the list, I must not have liked it. Or it was one of the roughly 700 entries that I just didn't get to. Remember, my four button Game Jam starts tomorrow, so follow the link in the description and sign up now. There are also links in the description to games from this video and to the Brackies Jam submission page. I want to thank you for sticking around this long, and if you liked the video, may I suggest hitting the like button. If that is an insufficient expression of your pleasure, then hit the subscribe button. If you didn't like it, don't hit any buttons. Just fire off some sick burns in the comments section and imagine me weeping as I read them. Until next time, this is Irish Ronan reminding you of the most important game loop in life. Do, fail, learn, repeat. See ya.